Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and I have lived in this house for 15 years and I have never been able to get reliable over-the-air TV broadcasts here. I've tried everything and two of my networks have been completely out of range and many of the other ones just don't have a very strong signal. But there is hope on the horizon, as I mentioned in a prior video, and that's because Next Gen TV has been activated in my region of the world here in Connecticut, and all of my local stations have uh, moved essentially to a single tower and are broadcasting on the same frequency. And it might be possible for me now to get all of my local networks delivered to my home for free using an antenna. And in this video, we're going to do an experiment to see if I can actually get free over the air television to work in this house finally. And I'm very eager to figure out if it is possible. And the antenna we're using for this experiment is a Antennas Direct Clearstream 2V. This was something that was reviewed favorably by the Antenna Man on YouTube, who's a popular product reviewer in this space. And what I'm gonna do is hoist it up on my amateur radio antenna tripod. This tripod goes almost to the roof line of my house, so this will really replicate what a permanent installation might look like and perform like. So that's the antenna component. I paid for the antenna with my own funds. For a tuner, we're going to use the HD Home Run Flex 4K. And in full disclosure, Silicon Dust, the makers of this product, provided it to the channel free of charge for this review. And they're also a sponsor here occasionally on the channel. I've been a big fan of HD Home Run tuners ever since I started this channel. I uh, have an HD Home Run Prime that brings my cable TV subscription into the house with a cable card, and I've talked a lot about that in the past. This one is designed for the new uh, Next Gen TV broadcasts. It's also known as ATSC 3.0. And what we're gonna do is plug the antenna into this box with the uh, coax connector there, and then I'm going to connect the box to my network, and then any device with a screen on my network can pull in the signal from the antenna. So I've got a computer here on the desk that we'll be using initially to try out some stuff and look at the strength of the signals if we're able to get any. Now this has four tuners on board, but only two of them can receive the Next Gen TV ATSC 3.0 broadcasts. However, all four tuners can bring in the older ATSC 1.0 standards. So you can mix and match what you're bringing in for recording and watching and whatnot. So let's get this antenna hoisted up and let's plug in the box and let's see what we can pick up with this new ATSC 3.0 standard. All right, so I've got the antenna now mounted up on the tripod and its height is pretty much where I would have it permanently installed close to the roof line there. So we've got a good height simulation. And for direction, I'm pointing it in the direction where those towers are located. I didn't really match it up precisely. I just kind of pointed it to where I think they might be. And let's see what we're getting here. I'm running a channel scan using the HD Home Run Flex 4K's control panel here. This is something you can load up on a web browser. It's super easy to use. And look at this. It has found 44 channels, many of which are ATSC 1.0 channels that I had trouble receiving before, like WTNH here, which is my ABC affiliate. And it picked up a bunch of the other channels that I usually get here. Let me zoom out so you can get a better look at what we're finding. But check it out here towards the bottom. It's got a bunch of HEVC channels. And these are the next gen channels coming off of that ATSC 3.0 tower. I know this because it is labeled as HEVC, which is the high efficiency video codec that ATSC 3.0 uses for video compression. And I have my CBS affiliate here, my ABC, my CW, my Fox, and my NBC all coming in. So, so far it looks like it found the channels, but let's see how strong they come in. All right, so we've got some broadcasts coming in right now. And what I've done is tuned VLC into two of those ATSC 3.0 sources. The one in the front here with the ad running is my local CBS affiliate, and the one behind it is my ABC affiliate. Let's dive into some of the performance statistics here to begin with. And as you can see here, we're doing pretty good. I don't get the uh, actual signal strength number, but I do have the percentages here through the HD Home Run software. And I think I might want to get a preamp perhaps plugged in here to boost that signal strength up a bit, but it is functioning just fine here. I've been letting it run for the last 15 minutes or so, and it appears to be 
uh, holding steady. And as you can see here, the symbol quality is at 100%. This is the CBS affiliate here coming in on the first tuner. And if I look at the second tuner, of course, the number is going to be identical because both of these programs are coming in off the same frequency and the same tower. It's basically tuned into the exact same thing, just getting different digital programming off of each of those. What I want to do next, though, is take a look at the video that it's delivering to us and a caveat about audio. All right, so here is a commercial running on one of my networks here, so I can capture this without a risk of a copyright strike here. And the video looks pretty good. It's coming in on all of them at 1080p in this HEVC format. I am noticing occasionally some digital artifacting happening. It's probably a result of my not so great signal strength here. So that's where having that additional uh, preamp might help make things look a little better here. But it definitely looks better than what I see over my cable system at the moment, largely because those are H.264 720p broadcasts versus 1080p coming in here. And that chicken sandwich looks delicious. Let me get out of uh, full screen mode here and show you the codec information that's coming across on this. And I will zoom in on it as it comes in in real time. And as you can see, we've got a 1080p signal here. It looks like 60 frames per second and H.265. Now the bit rate on this, as you can see, varies quite a bit. It got up to about six and a half there a second ago, and then it'll drop back down to three. And a lot of this varies based on what's going on in the scene and how much video information has to be decoded. But HEVC is a very efficient codec, and even at low bit rates, it always looks better than H.264 might at the same bit rate. But the big problem right now, at least on VLC, is that I get no audio. And the reason for that is that all of these ATSC 3.0 broadcasts are using a new Dolby standard called AC4. And most equipment out there doesn't support AC4 yet. A lot of the older stuff is never going to support it. So therein lies a complexity. So I anticipate as this next-gen TV thing becomes more of a thing, a lot of us who have smart TVs that are not all that old are going to have to get set-top boxes that support the new AC4 standard in order to decode this audio. And right now, a number of software apps don't yet do it. Now, on the HD home run side, what they are doing as a stopgap measure is to have the HD home run software that you use for DVR and live TV watching have the audio transcoded in the cloud and delivered back down. And it actually works fairly well. Lip syncing is working fine, but switching channels does take a little bit of extra time to get that audio transcoded in real time and spun up to the broadcast that you're watching. So there will be some issues here uh, initially getting all of this to work and not every piece of software supports it at the moment. Now I did try out a bunch of different applications to see what's working and what isn't. This is the Channels app running on my phone right now and the iPhone does support AC4 audio and it's able to get the audio from this broadcast from my antenna uh, using the Channels app and its DVR. Basically whatever comes in the Channels app is passing through and it seems to be working here. I also tried the Channels app on my Apple TV and my NVIDIA Shield TV. Both of those worked. However, if you have a device that doesn't support AC4, I'm not sure Channels is going to work for you at the moment. Plex does not work at all right now, so just keep that in mind. Now, there is a bounty right now for the first developer who can get AC4 support added to FFmpeg, which is the open source video and audio codec library that a lot of applications, including Plex, kind of depend on. So if that gets in, I think that will improve things considerably for those of us who like to roll our own DVR solutions. But in the short term, it's going to come down to hardware compatibility. If your hardware supports AC4, you're good. If it doesn't, you're going to have trouble. All right, one last thing to check out here, and that is signal strength and signal quality and whether or not I can improve it. I did go outside and double check that I was pointed in the right direction, and it turns out I am pretty much right on the compass coordinates of this particular tower we're getting our signal from. So the next step here is to see whether or not an amplifier might help, and the one that I picked up is this one. This is an LNA200 from WireGuard, and this consists of a device that you send up with the antenna here, 
And then it also has an amplifier module to boost the signal before it goes into the antenna. So I'm going to go out and hook this thing up here real quick and see if this improves our signal situation. And when we're done, we'll see if we have an improvement and hopefully putting us more into the green zone than where we are right now. All right, so this is what we were getting before, about 55% strength. And now we're getting about a 20% boost in strength with that amplifier. But look at the signal quality. Even though we're in the green here, it's about the same as what it was before. I see it diving into the yellow less now, but I'm occasionally seeing it dipping down into that yellow warning zone. So I think what I might need is a larger antenna and maybe amplify that one as well. And the company that makes the antenna that I'm using has one that basically consists of two of those units in one piece. And I think that one might do it. So I think we're there. And I can probably look at now some options for getting rid of the cable subscription, provided I can find alternatives for some of the cable shows that my wife likes to watch. So I think we're gonna have some more on this topic in the near future, but it looks like I've got a pretty good signal here and some directions in which I can go in to get this working permanently attached to the house. Now, what I might do is kind of combine two things in one for the follow-up to this video, because I recently got my amateur radio license and I have a bunch of antennas that I want to get up on the roof as well for that purpose. So I think what I'm going to do is find a professional antenna installer and have them come in and come up with a good strategy for getting this TV antenna up there along with my radio antennas so that I can continue down that journey. So a lot more to come on this topic. Let me know what you thought down in the comments below and maybe some tips and things that you think I might need to look at. One thing that I'm going to be interested in as I look at this as a full-time solution is how this AC4 thing is going to impact me because I have mostly NVIDIA Shield TVs and Apple TVs on the network here. So I don't think I'm going to have problems with audio, but I think a lot of folks out there with older smart TVs or older set-top boxes are going to have issues. So that's going to be something maybe we'll explore in a future video too. Uh, but at the moment at least, if you are using the Silicon Dust HD Home Run software, they do have a workaround that's pretty seamless to the user, but it does involve the internet to resolve. So we'll keep an eye on this AC4 issue as things roll out here. Again, it doesn't work on Plex at all at the moment, uh, but as soon as things get fixed and adjusted and updated, I will update my content on this topic as well. So more to come, but it looks like ATSC 3.0 is a real winner for me here in Connecticut. That is gonna do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Zybin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, Chris Allegretta, Brian Parker, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Baby Metal Fox God, Tom Albrecht, Amda Brown, Matt Zagaya, and Tech Time with Eric. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.